Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers today to put some rear discs and pads on this 2001 Discovery 2 TD5. Right, first things first, we've got the vehicle jacked up. We're lucky enough to have a ramp, which is great. If you don't have a ramp, obviously make sure you jack it up safely, put an axle stand under it to secure it. And then let's take the wheel off. So 27 mil socket, all five nuts off, and then we'll look at the brakes. As you can see, the discs don't look very nice. And also, if you can see the brake pad just down there, you can see how low it is. The MOT limit is 1.5 millimeters for a brake pad um, before it fails its MOT. And I think that is as low as you're gonna get. Um, so. Uh, the next thing to do is to take off the brake caliper. Two 12mm spanner sized bolts on the back of the caliper on the sliders. Now this is fairly badly corroded so they are they're not much of a head left so you're going to have to just tap a socket on with a hammer and very very careful because if it does round off that is going to be even harder of a job. So firstly two 12mm bolts off and then we'll take the caliper off. So I'm just going to take the bolts out now and then we'll show you that. Here's one of the bolts that holds the, uh, the caliper on and you can see how corroded it is and how difficult it was to get a socket on and actually get it out. It was very, uh, very tight. Once they were, them two are both out, you can remove the caliper, just place that to one side for a moment and just pull the pad out. You can see, you can see the look, the pad has completely gone, the material's gone and you're nearly down to the metal. So next thing is to take the actual cal caliper carrier off. And they are behind there, the two bolts, they are 13 mil spanner, but they're a, they're a double hex. So you can't use, you have to use like a double hex spanner or socket on them. And the same again, they do get really, really tight. So make sure you tap the spanner or socket on, and then you're really careful as you undo them. As you can see, this is one of the bolts on the caliper carrier. And as you can see, it's the, the, the double hex sort of configuration. So they do, they do corrode and they, they can get really difficult to get out. Once they're both out, we can lift the carrier off. That's where the brake pads sit. And these are the sliders, so they should slide in and out. We will take them out and clean them to make sure, but they often will seize up, and you'll have to take them out and then clean them up properly before you refit them. Next is to take the disc off. Now you can see there's one Phillips type screw that holds the disc onto the hub. And you probably need an impact screwdriver to get that off. So that's what we're going to do next. Now using the impact screwdriver, we've tried to undo the, the, uh, the retaining bolt, but it is just rounded off, which is fairly common. So there's a few options here. You can either just get a little center punch, dot the side, and then try to knock, knock the screw round to undo it. Alternative, if that doesn't work, you'll have to get a drill and just drill the head off. And then we'll have to take out the, uh, the broker bit afterwards and then replace it with a new one. Our screw has come out by center dotting it. And once it got loose, it was fairly okay, actually. So that's the retaining bolt out of the way. You might just have to give the disc a tap, then just remove it from the hub, and that's our brake disc. Now, I've got the uh, caliper piston pushing back in tool on. I mean, there's several ways you can do this. There's several tools you can buy. This is one that winds handbrake caliper type pistons in as well. So, uh, but what I have found is I've got it as fairly tight now and the piston is not moving anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pump the piston out and then we'll see what is causing it to, to seize up. See if it's corroded, if the piston's damaged, or we're going to see what we can do after that. We've pumped the piston out of the caliper. Now we've done that by literally somebody getting on the pedal, pumping the pedal slowly as the piston comes out. Just got a, uh, a pot underneath just to catch the fluid and we're just ready with a brake pipe clamp uh, for, for on the, to put on the pipe when the piston pops out. And there are several ways of doing it, but that's a nice easy way. Now the piston actually doesn't look too bad and it's not that badly corroded. But as you can see here, inside that caliper, there's the seal that the actual the, that seals on the piston and then there's that just that little ring there and that is the bit there that builds up on rust and just makes the piston tight this isn't as bad as it could have been so you could clean up this caliper quite easily put a new seal in it and, and a new dust cover and this would be fine so now it's just time to clean everything up before the reassemble so we need to clean up on the caliper carrier where the pads sit we need to take out the sliders clean all the rust off, re-grease them, make sure that in the uh, top of the dust cover there that's nice and rust free in there. Copper grease them and put them back in, make sure they're nice and clean and free. Then get a little file, just clean out the holes where the cal caliper carrier bolt through because they do tend to rust in there and, they, and, they, and they get very tight. So clean them out and then we'll put a bit of copper grease in there. Um, and then clean up the face where the disc sits, blow it all off, make sure there's no, um, no dust and rubbish around and then we'll replace the disc. 
That's the disc all cleaned up, placed in place, and the new retaining bolt, bit of copper grease on it. Tighten that up. That's that on, and now we can replace our caliper car carrier after cleaning it up. We're going to put the caliper carrier back on now. The new bolts we've got have got Loctite already on the on the thread, so you don't want to put any copper grease on the thread, but you probably just be better put a little bit on the uh, on the shank bit so that they stay nice and uh, nice and free. And then move those bolts in, tighten them up. Then we will put the pads in. Now it's time to refit the pads. Put those in place. And we've got a reconditioned brake caliper, which we're going to fit now. Just make sure that the two little flats on your sliders are in the right position so they sit in, sit in the, uh, the, the little groove on the caliper when you refit that. So that's those two on. Then we'll get our new bolts, bolt it in place, and then we'll replace the flexi. That's the caliper all bolted back in place. I'm now going to replace the flexible brake hose, which is a banjo bolt. Put two new copper washers on, that would be best. And then we're ready to bleed the brakes. So what's that on? New washers fitted. Bolt it back into place. And then we'll look at bleeding the brakes. There's several different methods of bleeding brakes. I mean, if you've bled brakes before, which hopefully you have if you're doing this job, um, you know, you'll, you'll have your own procedure. You can, you can get a pressure bleeder. Some of them are quite cheap nowadays. It goes on the master cylinder, which pressurizes the system. So all you need to do then is open the bleed nipple and then into a, a, um, a suitable tub to catch the brake fluid. Just wait for all the bubbles to go and it clear, clear brake fluid comes out. That's okay. You can use a pipe into just a little bottle of, uh, with a little bit of fluid in the bottom and then get somebody to pump the brake on and off and when the bubbles stop coming and it's clear fluid again, that's okay. So whichever method you prefer, that's the way to bleed the brakes. But what you need to do is obviously after you've finished bleeding them, you've tightened up everything, you've pressure checked it, make sure somebody puts the foot on the brake, there's no leaks on the flexi and there's no leaks on the bleed nipple and then make sure they've got a good pedal and road test it.